The Divine Maiden is a classic short story written in classical Chinese by Pu Songling, a novelist of the Qing Dynasty. The story is included in his collection of supernatural tales called Strange Stories from a Chinese Studio. Although the plot is full of twists and turns, it ultimately concludes with a happy ending. It is precisely because of the presence of the Divine Maiden that the life of the scholar Mi underwent a dramatic transformation. The scholar's surname is Mi, and he is from Fujian. On one occasion, he went to the county city for some business. After getting drunk at a small tavern on his way back home, he heard the loud sounds of drums and music coming from the courtyard of a wealthy household. Intrigued, he randomly asked a passerby about the situation. And the passerby informed him that the household was hosting a birthday banquet. Me took a look at the entrance and noticed there were no guests arriving. The music continued to echo in the courtyard. He thought it might be a private celebration and decided to go in and see for himself. So, he bought a congratulatory gift on the street and handed his name card to the servant guarding the gate before entering. The person who had questioned him earlier joked, You can tell this is a wealthy family. You're dressed modestly and brought such a meager gift. Moreover, you don't even know them. What are you hoping to achieve? After hearing the person's remarks, Mi felt a bit regretful. However, his name card was already submitted, and he found himself in a difficult situation. He had to wait outside. After a while, two young men came out from the mansion. They were dressed elegantly and had handsome features. They invited Mi into the house. Inside, Mi saw an elderly man sitting at the southern end of the room, with tables set on both sides filled with food and drink. There were only six or seven guests all dressed lavishly, resembling wealthy young heirs. Among them was a fellow villager of Mi's named Bao Ju. When they saw Mi, they all stood up and greeted him respectfully. The elderly man on the main seat also rose with the help of a cane. Mi thought of going up to exchange pleasantries with him, but the elderly man remained seated. The two young men who had brought Mi in spoke politely, our father is old and frail, unable to come forward for the greeting. Please forgive him. Mi shook his head humbly and thanked them. Not at all, not at all. At that moment, the elderly man instructed the servants to set up another table for Mai. Soon after, the feast resumed, with women playing music, drums and flutes. The lively music created a joyful atmosphere, and the guests enjoyed themselves. As the banquet neared its end, the elderly men had the two young men who had escorted guests to come down and offer drinks. Mi observed as they carried cups capable of holding three dew of wine, looking uneasy. Yet, seeing the other guests drink, he followed suit. After a few cups, Mi realized he couldn't handle any more. He stood up to take his leave, but the young men held onto his clothes, preventing him from leaving. Feeling somewhat intoxicated, Mi lost his balance and fell to the ground. In his semi-conscious state, Mi felt someone spraying cold water on his face. Slowly regaining consciousness, he stood up and saw that the banquet was over, and the guests had left. Only one young man was supporting him. Mi bid his farewell and left. Later, when Mi passed by the same house, he found out that the elderly man and his family had moved away. On his way back home, Mi met a fellow villager named Bao Jun. Bao Jun warmly invited Mi to a tavern for a drink, and Mi followed. They chatted in the tavern, and from Bao Jun, Mi learned that the old man was named Fu, not Mai. They drank until dusk. That night, Bao Jun suddenly died on the road. Bao Zhuang's father accused Mi of being the murderer. Officials examined Bao Zhuang's injuries and based on circumstantial evidence, Mi was charged with murder. Despite enduring harsh interrogations, authorities lacked concrete evidence to convict him of the crime. Consequently, Mi was imprisoned. More than a year later, government officials visited the area, leading to Mi's release from prison. After his release, Mi returned home to find his wealth gone, his reputation tarnished, and his career prospects ruined. Knowing he had been unjustly accused, he sought exoneration and a restoration of his reputation. 
He set out for the county city with his belongings. On the way exhausted, me rested by the roadside. A carriage approached from a distance and stopped before him. A maid inquired, are you surnamed me? Startled, me asked how she knew. The maid said, how did you end up in such a destitute state? Me explained his story. The maid asked where he was going, and me mentioned his intention to restore his reputation in the county city. After a few words with someone in the carriage, the person inside requested me's presence at the front. Peering inside, me saw a pair of delicate hands part the curtain. He stole a glance and saw a stunning young woman sitting within. The young woman said, You've suffered a great injustice. Your story is truly lamentable. To regain your reputation, entering the academic institution empty-handed won't suffice. Passing through the gates is like navigating a marketplace these days, with open bribery. I don't have much to offer, but I'll give you 200 tails of silver as capital for your pursuit of success. Upon seeing this, me quickly declined, saying, Lady, your kindness to me is already too much. How could I accept money? I cannot take it. I only hope to know your name and create a portrait to worship daily. That would be enough. The maid didn't listen to his words and simply placed a package on the ground, then rode away swiftly on her horse. Helpless, me could only take the package back home. Upon examining it, he still hesitated to use it to regain his reputation and curry favor with the powerful. Later, me participated in the exam and managed to enter the county school as the top scorer. He gifted all the silver to his elder brother, who was skilled at accumulating wealth. Within three years, the Mi family's fortune was restored to its former glory. At this point, the local governor happened to be a disciple of Mi's ancestors, leading him to care for Mi's family greatly. With one brother having gained scholarly achievements and the other prosperity, they became a well-known and respected local family. However, Mi remained upright and incorruptible, never seeking favors or connections from the governor despite their family TIs. One day, a well-dressed guest arrived on a fat horse, seeking an audience with Mai. No one in the family recognized him, but Mi saw that he was the son of the family he had visited for the birthday celebration earlier. Mi courteously invited him into the living room. The wealthy young man knelt upon entering, and Mi asked in surprise, What is the meaning of this? With sorrow, the young man named Fu said, My family is facing a great calamity, and only my elder brother can help by requesting the governor's assistance. Mi declined saying, Though I have connections with the governor, due to our family history, I am unwilling to trouble others with personal matters. Begging on his knees, Fu beseeched me, who responded sternly, Our connection was formed through a casual meeting over drinks. How can you force others to compromise their lives and honor for your sake? Embarrassed and frustrated, Fu stood up and left. The next day, me sat alone at home. A maid entered, and he recognized her as the same person who had given him silver in the mountains to help her mistress. Startled, me stood up. The maid berated him, saying, Have you forgotten the pearl flower? Me quickly assured her, How could I? How could I forget? The maid said, The young master who visited your home yesterday is my mistress's elder brother. Hearing this, me felt inwardly pleased but pretended, I really wasn't aware. Even if it were a boiling pot, I wouldn't accept commands from him without his sister personally requesting it. The maid remained silent, leaving after a while. Later that afternoon, the maid returned, knocking on the door. She informed me, the mistress is here. Before she could finish, the young lady entered the room. Without speaking, she stood in a corner, facing the wall and weeping. Me bowed in respect and said, If it weren't for the lady, I wouldn't be here today. Please feel free to give any orders. Through tears, the young lady said, People who beg are often looked down upon, and those who seek help are often regarded with apprehension. I roamed around in the dead of night, facing hardships I've never experienced. But now, I have no choice but to beg. There's nothing more to say. 
Mi tried to comfort her, saying, I hesitated because I missed the chance to meet you again. I didn't want you to end your hardships in the middle of the night because of me. It's my fault. He reached out and grabbed her sleeve, secretly touching her arm. The young lady was furious, scolding, You're not in a pride gentleman at all. I thought you cared about honor, but now you're taking advantage of my situation. I misjudged you. Truly misjudged you. Angry, she left and got onto the carriage to depart. Me hurriedly chased after her, apologizing and kneeling on the ground to stop her. The maid also pleaded with her, slightly easing her anger. In the carriage, the young lady told me, I'll tell you the truth, I'm not an ordinary person. I'm a divine maiden, and my father is a celestial being. He accidentally offended local officials and is facing punishment from the Jade Emperor. Without the governor's help, he cannot be saved. If you remember the favor I've shown you in the past, use this yellow paper to obtain the governor's seal for me. After speaking, the carriage left. Me didn't know how to approach the governor, so he used the excuse of exorcism to borrow the governor's seal. The governor, thinking exorcism was superstitious, rejected the request. Me then bribed the governor's confidant, who agreed to lend him the seal. However, me struggled to find the right opportunity to use it. Left with no other options, he returned home. At that moment, the maid arrived again, and me recounted his efforts to her. She left without a word, before leaving, she gave him a reproachful look, seemingly blaming him for not trying hard enough. Me chased after her, saying, please tell the lady that if I can't accomplish this task, I'm willing to sacrifice my life. After she left, Me spent a sleepless night, unsure of what to do. The next day, he got up early to continue his efforts. Coincidentally, the governor's favorite concubine wanted to buy pearls. Me had no choice but to offer the cherished pearl flower. The concubine liked it and secretly gave me the governor's seal. Me concealed the yellow paper with the seal and returned home. The maid arrived once more. With pride, Me showed her the yellow paper and said, Fortunately, I fulfilled my mission. But for years, I've treasured something that I never wanted to sell due to my humble status. Now, I've discarded it for the sake of your mistress. He told the maid how he exchanged a pearl flower for the seal. Me added, I don't mind giving up gold, but please tell the lady that the pearl flower must be returned. After a few days, young Master Fu came to express his gratitude and brought over a hundred tails of gold. Me's mood instantly soured, and he said, the reason I did this was solely because Miss Ling selflessly helped me. Even if you brought 10,000 tails of gold, how could I sacrifice my own name and integrity for the seal? Despite Fu's repeated requests, Mi remained unmoved. Fu had no choice but to bid farewell and leave. Before departing, he told me, this matter can't just be left like this. You've helped me, and the debt remains. The next day, as per the goddess's orders, the maid brought me 300 exquisite pearls, saying, these should suffice to compensate for the pearl flower. Me replied, I was attached to that particular pearl flower, not these precious pearls. Even if you had given me treasures worth a fortune at the time, selling them would only make me wealthy. I cherish that pearl flower, choosing poverty over riches for what? Lady, you're a divine being. I dare not have any other extravagant desires. Fortunately, if I can repay one thousandth of your favor, I will die without regrets. Following that, me placed the pearls on the desk, bowed to them, and then returned them to the maid. A few days later, young Master Fu returned. Me had prepared a banquet to entertain him. As they sat face to face, they drank heartily, chatting joyfully as if they were family. As the cups were emptied and refilled, a cask of wine was consumed. Slightly tipsy, Fu, with a rosy face, told me, You are an honest and upright person. My brother and I misunderstood you. It was actually my younger sister who had a keen eye. My father is deeply grateful for your great kindness. He can't repay it, 
so he can only arrange my sister's marriage to you. However, he fears a separation between mortals and gods, worrying that you might reject her. Me, shocked and delighted by this revelation, was at a loss for words. Fu stood up to take his leave, saying, Tomorrow night is the ninth day of the seventh month, an auspicious date. Prepare for your wedding. The next evening, as promised, people from the Fu family brought the goddess to the ceremony. All the rituals were just like those for ordinary weddings. Three days after the wedding, the goddess bestowed gifts upon me siblings, servants and relatives. She was virtuous and gentle, treating her sister-in-law as she would a mother-in-law. The family lived harmoniously and joyfully. Unfortunately, the goddess did not bear children for several years. She consistently advised me to take a concubine, but he refused due to his affection for her. Coincidentally, Mi's elder brother was doing business in Jiangsu and Xijiang and brought back a concubine from there. This concubine, named Gu, was graceful and beautiful. Mi and his wife were very fond of her. When the goddess saw a pearl flower pinned to Gu's head, it reminded her of the old pearl flower from years ago. She took it off, examined it, and confirmed its identity. She asked in astonishment, How did you obtain this pearl flower? Gu explained, initially, a favorite concubine of the governor died. Her servant secretly stole this pearl flower to sell. My late father thought it was too cheap to pass up, so he bought it. I admired it greatly too. My father didn't have sons, only me as his daughter. Back then, whatever I wanted, I could have. But after my father passed away, our family's fortunes declined, and I was fostered by an old lady named Gu. She was my maternal aunt. Seeing my pearl flower, she always wanted to sell it. I was determined to keep it, even if it meant sacrificing my life. That's why I've preserved it till now. Me and his wife exclaimed, This possession from 10 years ago is now back in its original owner's hands. Isn't this fate? The goddess took out another pearl flower and said, These two haven't been a pair for a long time. She gifted both pearl flowers to Gu, personally pinning them in her hair. Later, Gu gave birth to twin sons. Me and his wife named them. Me lived to the age of 80, while the goddess remained eternally youthful. When Me became bedridden, the goddess arranged for a carpenter to make a coffin, twice the size of a regular one. After Me passed away, the goddess didn't mourn or observe the mourning period. When family members returned home, they found her lying in the coffin as well, and they buried them together. The local legend of the tomb of the great couple persists to this day. This story, The Divine Maiden, is from Pu Songling's strange stories from a Chinese studio. Mi was an upright man who ultimately gained the beauty. The story, while filled with ups and downs, concludes in a happy ending where all conflicts are resolved. In this tale, besides presenting a complete story, Pu Songling subtly conveys the corrupt and dark aspects of feudal society. For instance, the authorities unjustly imprisoned me for a whole year without proper investigation. Me had to resort to bribing officials to regain his reputation. This all serves as a profound metaphor. Without encountering the goddess, Me's life might have remained uneventful. Accompanying his brother and sister-in-law in their modest life, full of hardships. It was the presence of the goddess that dramatically transformed Me's life.